Father Christmas Father Christmas Last Christmas morning, Father Christmas had come home feeling very tired, freezing cold, and more grumpy than ever. He was so fed up that he decided it was time to take a holiday. First, he turned his sledge into a caravan for the reindeer to pull, and then he packed his suitcase. When it was time to leave, Father Christmas took a cat and a dog to the canals and sadly said goodbye. He hitched the reindeer to the front of the sledge and off they flew to La Belle France so that no one would recognize him. Father Christmas bought a stripy jumper and a beret. Right then, dinner time, he thought. Lovely fish, what? No chips? After that came lobster, snails and pudding, followed by the bell. Crumbs, he cried, blooming expensive. Father Christmas had eaten so much that he began to feel very poorly. A few days later, some people at the campsite discovered the reindeer. Ham, time to move on, murmured Father Christmas. I know, I'll go to Scotland. He landed in a valley in the pouring rain. B booming cold severed Father Christmas and he went to an inn to warm up. He loved the bagpipes and the dancing. Next morning the sun was shining and he jumped into the lock for a swim. Ah, it was freezing. Enough is enough. I need to go somewhere hot. Las Vegas, nice room, good food, plenty to do. This is life, checkered Father Christmas. And so the days and the weeks went by. One morning by the pool, a small boy recognized who he was. Oh dear, mourned. Father Christmas, time to be off again. He asked for his bell. It was enormous. Better go home, he said. So he packed his bags and set off. Back again, my dears. And the caravan bumped on the ground. Better go and get the rascals. Cat and dog were so excited to see him again. All right, all right. Mind me blooming beard, laughed Father Christmas. As he tried to push his front door open, Father Christmas found a mountain of letters behind it. Blooming Christmas post already, he grumbled. Gets earlier every year, but he still sat down to read every single one. His list of presents grew longer and each morning more letters arrived. Soon it was time to get his suit from the dry cleaners. The lady in the shop who served him thought, he was going to a fancy dress party. I should be so lucky, he growled at her. At last, it was Christmas Eve, and Father Christmas was woken early by his noisy alarm clock. Blooming Christmas here again, he mourned, crawling out of bed, and pulling back the curtains to look out. Ah, it snowed during the night, and he carried on grumbling as he got dressed. He fed Captain Dad and listened to weather forecast. Suppose I'd better load up the sledge, he said. Then he fetched the reindeer and harnessed them up. Snow began to fall again as he gently steered the sledge through his open gate. Tally ho, my dears, he cheered, and the sledge took off into the sky. 
But Father Christmas soon started the complaining again when he flew straight through a thunderstorm. So to cheer himself up a little, he began to sing a song. Jump up on my sleigh. And we are all on our way to another blooming Christmas. His sledge landed on the roof of the first house, and Father Christmas squeezed down the chimney. He crept softly into the children's bedroom and carefully tucked the presents into their stockings. Throughout the night, Father Christmas and the reindeer flew from place to place. His biggest problem was how to get into some of the houses. Some chimneys were really tight to squeeze. Oh, moaned Father Christmas. Other places didn't have any chimneys at all. Father Christmas took a break and listened to the weather forecast again. Then it was back to work. That's it, boys, he said to the reindeer sometime after. We'd better get a move on. We are a bit late for the party this year. There was a cheering and a waving as the sledge landed in the middle of the snowman party. Hello, James, said the Father Christmas to a little boy with a snowman. Glad you could make it again this year. The party was wonderful with plenty of food and dancing. Then James and his snowman went to see their reindeer and to find their presents in the sledge. But, oh dear, they found two more hidden under the seat. That's torrid. That's torn it, said the Father Christmas. I've left the wrong present before, but I've never forgotten any. Come on, my dears, we are going to f going for the blooming record. Bye, or see you next year. Come on, we are nearly there now, he shouted, as they flew over London and into the grounds of Buckingham Palace. Oh, good, flags flying, they are in. He quietly delivered the last two parcels and headed back to the sledge. Still at it, mate, asked the milkman. Done, now, thank blooming goodness. Growled Father Christmas, and he and the reindeer set off for home. Well done, my dears, he said, as they landed safely. He yawned and led the reindeer to their stable. Once inside his warm house, Father Christmas took off his hat and boots. He hung up his jacket and then made himself a nice cup of tea. He rolled up his sleeves, and with the cat sitting on his shoulders, he prepared the Christmas dinner. When everything was cooked, he sat down to enjoy it. Later, after Father Christmas had had a steaming hot bath, he got ready for bed. He put a parcel each for Duck and Cat under the tree and picked up his own presents. Then Father Christmas headed upstairs. Might as well open them now, he thought, looking at the first present. Mind you, I already know what's in this one. Another blooming old fruit tie from Auntie Eddie. The usual ghastly sex from Cousin Violet, he grumbled. Unwrapping the second. Wow, that's more like it, Father Christmas laughed as he discovered a bottle. Good old Uncle Bob, Father Christmas leaned over to change the date on the calendar. It was Christmas Day. Well, that's that for another blooming year, he said thanks for free. And, uh, Happy blooming Christmas to you and all.